Good morning, my darling. I am pleased to see you have finally awoken. How curious. I was under the impression I might have to calm you, to let you know that there is no need to be afraid of me. But it seems you are already rather comfortable in my presence, despite just seeing me for the first time. What a pleasant turn of fate. I despise the mere thought of making you uncomfortable, my little friend. After all, I deeply care about you, and it seems my aura reflects that. Now that you have regained your consciousness and are here with me, the connection between us seems so much stronger. You can sense it as well, can you not? I assume you have felt it throughout your entire life. This faint, underlying sense of peace. A calm, comforting notion. That someone will always be looking out for you. And yet, despite this, you were never truly happy, were you? Oh, I am sorry, my dear. I'm getting ahead of myself. You may have subconsciously known of my existence for a long time. And yet, you do not have a glimmer of who or what I am. It must be rather confusing to awake in an environment so different from what you're used to. No matter whether you feel comfortable here. I will try my best to make this transition as simple for you as I possibly can. Not because I see your mind is inadequate, I assure you. But it might be rather difficult for you to accept this new reality you have suddenly found yourself in. It will take you a while to adjust, and I will grant you all the time you need. So, while not entirely accurate, I suppose for now it is sufficient for you to know that I am what humans would consider a deity, a goddess, if you will. My dear, there is no need to be struck with awe. I intend to treat you as my equal. A simple difference in a life form is not a reason enough to deem myself superior. Not in the way I see it, at least. In the grand scheme of the universe, even a deity is a nothing more than a speck. Do not misunderstand me, though. Despite of what I am, my name cannot be found in any of the scrolls, books, or stories you might have come in contact with thus far. I am not the subject of any earthly religion. In fact, I do not typically engage in human matters. I simply attend to their realm to look after you, my dearest. The only prayers I answer to are yours, none other. I have guided you throughout your whole life. I have lent a hand to weave the strings of fate in your favor. Whenever I thought it was appropriate to do so. 
Unfortunately, I have to interfere most sparingly, as to not disturb the flow of humanity's destiny. Despite of my best efforts, I was not able to provide you with a fulfilling life I had hoped to. I know how you feel, my dear. I sense every emotion you have experienced, and it pains me to know how many of them were so greatly unpleasant. Your constant sense of being different from others, your struggle to fit in with your peers, to be accepted, never truly feeling like you belong. I know how demanding this has been on you. I know how much these emotions have tortured you in the past. And I believe myself to be responsible for your suffering. I previously assumed I would be able to help you live a regular life on Earth after all. That I would be able to manipulate your surroundings in a way that would soothe your pain. My efforts have failed, and I deeply apologize for not taking much needed action any sooner. <sighs> you are truly kind, but do not forgive me too soon. You do not yet know what I have done to cause your pain. Please, my dearest, take a moment to think about what I will explain to you. Everything you previously thought to be true about yourself will appear in an entirely new light. Such information is not easy to process. And yet, you deserve to know. I do not wish to keep it from you for any longer. You have always found it rather difficult to be part of a group. Never truly felt accepted. Like everyone else, was profoundly different from you. And you are correct in your assessment. You are not like the ones around you. You do not truly fit in with others on Earth. But not for the reasons you assume. None of the hurtful thoughts you subject yourself to are even close to the truth. I understand why you think so negatively of yourself. The rejection you have faced, the disappointment of being left out, time and time again. The frustration of your efforts, going entirely unnoticed. It must be difficult not to turn the blame on yourself. Not to look for a defect within you. Something that must be so utterly wrong, which everyone seems to notice, but you. But you need to realize, there is not a single aspect you need to change about yourself, to finally be accepted. Neither the way you look, the way you dress yourself, nor your lovely personality or at fault. Truthfully spoken, it is not your fault in any capacity. You are wonderful, my little friend. You possess all the traits I could have ever wished for my dearest being to have. You are kind, creative, intelligent, and so much more. But, 
You have never belonged to that planet. It was me who brought you there. I had mistakenly assumed it to be the most suitable to you, most natural. I deeply apologize for the distress my decision has caused you. It was wrong of me to send you to an environment so unsuitable for one of your kind, even if it was done out of foolishness. I hope you can find a little comfort in the knowledge that I only had your best interest in mind. Either way, I was gravely mistaken in my judgment. I can see you are confused, dear. I do not blame you. It must be hard to receive news that your life has been so permanently altered by a being beyond your current comprehension. Given the circumstances, I believe you are handling this new information exceptionally well. I could have avoided all this if I had simply found a more appropriate way to care for you to begin with. However, I cannot go back in time. I can merely offer to answer your questions, my darling. All the patience of this realm will be afforded to you. Please, feel comfortable to inquire about anything that stakes your curiosity. I had already assumed that your true origin would be much of interest to you. To answer your question, no, I did not create you. I am not capable of such feats, and you need not look up to me as your creator. I had found you many, many years ago. I found you floating aimlessly through my realm. You were nothing more but a small spark of consciousness, just as all life begins. I still do not quite understand the manner in which you had appeared, as there are no other beings present here but me. Perhaps the world you originated from had collapsed in on itself, as sometimes happens, and you were transported here by mere chance. Or possibly, the universe sensed the dreadful isolation I had found myself in, and decided to send a gentle soul to keep me company. If it were up to me, I would like to believe the latter to be true. After such a long time, even the most peaceful solitude tends to turn into a bitter loneliness. Whichever may be the case, I readily decided to take you in. I cared for you, nurtured you. And over time, I grew rather fond of you. Like a mother who cares for her child, I developed a love towards you, whose roots go deeper than any other. No other being is as important to me as you are, my little friend. And I can sense that you share this love. Despite having met me consciously for the first time, barely a few minutes prior, the soul does not easily forget a connection as deep as ours. And it was this thought that provided me solace 
when I decided to send you away from this realm. I knew this environment would not be able to provide enough to foster your mind or develop your senses. You would stagnate, remain as a simple spark. As much as it pained me, I couldn't simply deny you what your soul so desperately craved. So I came to an extraordinarily painful conclusion. I spent a long time creating different realms, planets, and civilizations. Most were not suitable to you, filled with nothing but a vast emptiness or rage and terror. When I came across the earth, I thought I had struck gold. The luscious landscapes, the sheer endless possibility to choose your own path. It seemed too good to be true. I prepared your spirit best I could, made sure you would be able to be born within a human body, and after a long final embrace, I sent you off to explore your new world, grow your mind and intellect, and to learn everything a young soul needs to know. Had I known the mental pain and sorrow you would have to endure, I would have never considered altering your life in this manner. I would have found another way to provide you with what was required. Once again, I am truly sorry. I am so sorry that you had to spend the majority of your young life under such conditions. I should have made the decision to let you return much sooner. But I was afraid. Afraid you would feel uneasy. Afraid you would not share the deep connection we once had. Afraid you would ask to be sent back to Earth. It was selfish of me to wait for so long. Cowardly. My feelings should not have been kept safe at the expense of your suffering. While this is no excuse, I did attempt to ease your pain to the best of my ability. Whether you were able to sense it or not, your prayers did not go unheard, and my love for you has never been greater. If you allow for it, my precious little friend, I will do anything in my power to make it up to you. Whatever your heart desires, I will gladly give to you. Nothing shall ever harm you again. You are protected here. You are loved. And most importantly, this is where you belong. Now that your spirit has grown, we can finally be reunited. And if you wish for it, for as long as this universe exists, you are home, my child.